up, everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie, and today, today I gotta figure out a better angle. <laughs> so I only have a desk tripod, um, but I think I need to get a floor tripod to start filming uh, so that I can show off my background now in all of its glory, uh, because I have my fantasy nerd corner coming together. I will make a short about it. I was going to do a short about just my books, but I think I'm going to do probably two short, one about the books there and then one about the walls, um, where I have a map of Middle Earth. Uh, this is just like a, a 3D wooden map from Z Wood. Uh, I've actually done a full review of this about a year ago, so you can check that out on my channel if you want to see close up. Uh, and then over here, I have uh, Glamdring which is Gandalf's sorf, sorf, sword uh, from Lord of the Rings. You can see the top there. Uh, and then over here, uh, I have, I don't know how to pronounce this, sorry, but uh, Enuril, <laughs> or however you want to pronounce it. Um, basically, it is uh, Elendil's sword, then gets put back together and given to Aragorn. Uh, so, you know, nerd, and I love it, but... You're not here for that. Although, let me know in the comments down below if you actually would, would be here for that and you actually want me to show it. But like I said, I haven't figured out how to film yet with it. So there's that. But today is part one of two videos that I'm going to release. Uh, and that is my favorite. And then they happen to be just three each. So I'm not sure if I'm going to call this top three yet. I've been doing a lot of top threes, top fives, because the algorithm loves it. But I just happened to pick three each, uh, with one honorable mention, which is actually my mic stand, which is the Platinum Century 3776, um, for my favorite expensive fountain pens. And then um, uh, the next video you will see, which will likely be Friday, uh, if not next Monday, is my favorite inexpensive fountain pens. Now, I have to put a little asterisk on this because everyone's idea of what is expensive and what isn't expensive, vastly different. Um, I've decided to just arbitrarily pick $100 <laughs> as the cap. Uh, so anything over 100 is expensive. Anything under 100 is inexpensive. Um, I did pick US dollars, by the way, just because I know that is the majority of those who watch my content. Uh, my pick would be a lot less <laughs> if it was Canadian dollars because we got to pay a lot more. And uh, it's for the most part where all the main retailers are anyways in North America. So that was my caveat. Anything under 100 is less expensive. Anything over 100 is more expensive. So that was my limit. Um, there are going to be people who think you know, anything over $20 is expensive, myself included when I got into this hobby. Uh, you know, I, I bought a, a Pilot Metropolitan for, I believe it was like 12 or $14, something like that. And I thought that that was nuts. <clears throat> now look at me. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's all the like the preamble, the rambling, the asterisks, and let's just jump into it. So I'm going to start with one that you all have probably already guessed. Uh, I guarantee you, you don't see one of them coming because these aren't necessarily the pens that I use most often, but they're just my favorite. Uh, and they're my favorite for a couple different reasons that I'm going to explain. So I'm going to get the one that you all know is coming out of the way first. And that is the Pilot Custom 912 with the Falcon Nib and the Ebonite Feed. So I got the Ebonite Feed from nibsmith.com. Uh, which is actually from Nib Factory, but he Nibsmith sells it through their site. Uh, this is the three slit ebonite feed. You can also get a two slit ebonite feed. I've never got the two, so I don't know what the difference would be uh, in practicality other than duh, one less slit. <laughs> um, but I also got the black feed instead of the red one because you can also get a red one um, but I just didn't feel like it would go with this so I love this primarily for the nib which I don't want it focusing on my face because uh, it is the falcon nib which means it does have a little bit more flex um, which I don't use it specifically for that purpose I'm not a flex writer but what I really love about this pen and this setup is A, whew, it is a fire 
pose writer. And B, depending on the pressure that I put down, it is going to offer a lot of natural flex uh, because of the falcon nib. And my light just blew out, so it's going to be a little bit darker. <laughs> we'll see if I turn on this one, if that makes a difference. Uh, and what I like about that is it shows my emotion when I'm writing specifically journal entries, especially if I have long journal entries. Um, you'll see when I'm like super happy, it'll be like light, flowy, airy, like, you know, super flamboyant. If I'm upset, angry, anxious, uh, sad, it tends to have much harsher, firmer pressure, which while I'm writing, I cannot tell. But when I go back and reread my entries, oh baby, can I tell? And I find that so fascinating. Um, it fits really nice in my hand. It's light, uh, which I really like. Um, so that when I do those long uh, writing sessions, it doesn't cramp up my hand. Uh, the only thing that does kind of drive me nuts is the Pilot Con 70 converter. I know a lot of people don't like it because it's difficult to clean out. I don't find that because I just use an ink syringe uh, and just shoot it out of there. Um, but what I dislike is that with the new ones, you've got to have them perfectly straight up to press the button. So it's not a big deal if you're filling from like a, a pretty full ink bottle. But if you're filling from anything that's like a sample or anything you have to tilt, it just doesn't fill that easily. Um, so that aside... <laughs> Pilot Custom 912. Love it. Another one that you will not be surprised by um, and is the least expensive of my expensive pens uh, and the only one with a steel nib is the Bennu Euphoria. Specifically this one. Specifically the bourbon finish. It is glorious. I love the uh, like hexagon style around the body. It gives some good texture to it. I adore the shimmeries of it, which is difficult to capture on camera, by the way. <laughs> um, I really like that it's a large pen, but it is resin, so it's not super heavy. Uh, so it does fit really nicely in my hand. Um, the grip section is very, very comfortable. It has a steel nib plastic ABS feed uh, and is a um, standard international <laughs> cartridge converter system. And it just feels amazing in my hand. The reason why I really like this one, other than the fact that it writes phenomenally, by the way, um, is because this pen really changed how I approach looking at fountain pens. <laughs> because Bennu is a brand that I slept on, and I'm ashamed to admit it, but I judged it. I judged the book by the cover, and I just did not understand why anyone would want to buy a Bennu for the price point. It has a plastic feed, it has a steel nib, it's a resin pen, they're very flamboyant designs. Um, you know, I, at the time I thought they were quite gaudy. Um, this one particular had not come out yet, this bourbon finish, which just is right up my alley with the red and the gold and the just warm, unctuous feel of it. <laughs> but I bought this one for my birthday a couple years ago and I thought, what's the worst that can happen? I can probably sell it if I don't like it. Well, holy moly, I love it. <laughs> I was not expecting it to write so, so, so well. And as those who've watched my videos for a long time, you know I've fallen in the Banu trap now. I have three Euphorias. I have, uh, I think, four Talismans. I now have a Briolette. And I am not looking back. Banu is... Banu knows what they're doing, man. Uh, <laughs> they really do. I mean, it is a plain Schmidt nib. But man, oh man, does it write perfectly. Um, by the way, every pen that I talk about, I do a full in-depth reviews on if you want to uh, check those out rather than just the why I like them. Um, I really like to ink this up with KWZ Honey for whatever reason. That seems to be the primary one that I choose. Um, but I, I really love this pen for the fact that it basically reminded me not to be 
a tool bag. <laughs> so who knew? Uh, and then my last favorite uh, most expensive pen, or expensive pen rather, uh, is one that I actually have beef with. <laughs> but I love it anyways. Uh, and it's not one I talk about very often because I kind of recommend it. <laughs> So let's just get into it. And that is the Wancher Dream Pen. Uh, this one specifically is in Tamanaki Urushi. Uh, so it is the red, gorgeous red. It's like a deep red and it gets kind of like lighter towards like the tips here. This I purchased off of their Kickstarter that they did many, many years ago. It was actually the very first thing I ever backed on Kickstarter. Um, I like the um, fact that the, the Urushi goes into the grip section as well. This one does have a red ebonite feed. So kind of what I was mentioning, come on, don't focus on my face, focus on the feed. No, it really doesn't want to. <laughs> what if I get out of frame? Wow. Okay. Well, no focusing for you. Uh, this is the one I was mentioning. You could also get in the pilot pen, not this design specifically, but like that color. Uh, and it does have a 14 karat gold nib that is stamped with the Wancher logo uh, and has a standard international feed. I adore the way that this feels. Holy moly. If you've never felt an Urushi lacquered pen before, guys, it is the smoothest thing I have ever felt like I just I don't even know how to describe it it's just so smooth and it's warm when you're holding it and it does feel really great in my hands um, you can't post it but I mean it's big you don't need to the nib writes really well it's not scratchy it's perfectly tuned the reason why I have a bit of beef with it is because Wancher for years has been battling with inconsistent ink flow with their ebonite feeds and while this handles it pretty decently, I've had some other Wancher pens that do not. Um, and you do get some inconsistencies. It never, it never not writes. <laughs> it's just it'll write drier versus wetter at seemingly random. Uh, I don't know if they fixed the issue, but I did know that they pulled all their Ebonite feeds. They stopped selling them and they only sold their plastic feeds um, with the steel nib and not the ebonite and gold combo because they are aware of that issue so that's why i don't really talk about this very often uh is because it does have some inconsistent writing now i love this pen anyways um but i don't talk about it for that reason now i have used many wancher pens before as you can see if you look at my channel uh, and i've used them with their steel nibs before and their steel nibs perform really well. I don't know why this isn't focusing. There it goes. And their steel nibs do perform really, really well. Uh, so it also drastically, by the way, reduces the cost. <laughs> um, so I really, really do like it. And they do have uh, sort of a slip and seal technology in there like this platinum um, that does seal up the pen really really well i very much enjoy putting ferris wheel press um candy marsala into this pen so <laughs> these are the three that i chose uh, for various different reasons and i did say i had an honorable mention and that is this platinum two reasons one it's in the honorable mention because technically it's over a hundred dollars so it should belong in this category but you can buy it in a lot of after like gray markets uh, for less than $100. So I was conflicted. <laughs> so I decided to include it as an honorable mention in this video anyways, um, because it is the very first gold nib I ever had and I do have an attachment to that. Um, but I won't get too far into that because I've made many, many videos where I talk about why I love this pen so much. So the Pilot, the Banu and the Wancher are my top favorite pens over $100. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below what you feel are your favorite pens that are over $100 US uh, or basically what you even consider an expensive pen. Just tell me what your favorites are. I'm curious um, because if there's one that I've never even heard of, I'm very much going to want to check that out. <laughs> 
Uh, so while you're in the comments letting me know that, be sure to hit the like button because wowie wowie does that ever change the algorithm for me uh, and helps to spread the videos around so that hopefully we can get to 20,000 subscribers. That would be sick by the end of the year. Um, if you also want to check out my description, you'll find a link to my Patreon account if you want to help support me and what I do here. But even if you don't, if you've made it 15 minutes into this video and you're still watching, you are the reason I make these videos and I'll see you next time. Bye. Big, big, big thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. These members are my VIPs and above, but regardless of where you are, I appreciate you so much if you help support me and what I do here.